Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and um, welcome to this year's um, Open Air National Workshop, which is organized by the Library of the University of Cyprus in cooperation with the Directorate General for European Programs, Coordination and Development, and the Research uh, Promotion Foundation. The focus of uh, today's event is the role of the repositories uh, in open access. And uh, before proceeding, I would just like to uh, inform you um, that the event is broca broadcasted through live streaming and uh, also that copies of the PowerPoint presentations will be uploaded on the website of the University of Cyprus Library. So now without uh, further delay, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Kostandinos Kostandinou, Vice Rector for International Affairs, Finance and Administration of the University of Cyprus for his welcoming speech. Good morning, Kalimera Sas. Um, it's always a great pleasure to invite people to this room and to the University of Cyprus, whether you are coming from afar or from closer by. So a warm welcome. I, ho I hope you'll have an interesting day and a good uh, workshop that will be fruitful uh, and also productive for everybody. Um, personally, I remember the excitement back in the early 90s when the American Fiscal Society released all its um, back issues of scientific journals online. Um, I happen to be a physicist and I identify with APS as a very innovative institution. The first time I saw a journal article on internet it was by it was in the American Physical Review and it was part of that effort. And I thought, wow, we don't need to wait for journals to come to Cyprus or for purchasing back issues. Um, that opened a window for me, and it stayed with me since over the last 20 to 25 years um, as an important instrument in gaining access to information and in being able to do my work and contribute to my writing by having um, access to that information. Um, as a university, we like to build bridges, bridges to the next generation by investing in people uh, and helping people engage with their own development, setting targets, taking responsibility for their own lives. Bridges to international science. We like our research to be recognized internationally, to be published internationally, and to be openly accessible. Mm -hmm. Open access is about, really, is about making public information really openly accessible to everybody. It's about making a bridge between scientific knowledge and knowledge in the making and global society. It's about paying back to society what they are investing in, uh, in research efforts. It's about also contributing to those, those people who do not have the resources to engage with the global science system. It's about bringing basic access to the third world, to current research that sometimes, especially in medical journals, is very relevant to lives on a at critical stages on a daily basis. Um, 20 years after um, the APS released its backlog of, backlog of journals openly, there is still a lot of work to be done. And much of, the, much of the effort is about bringing different actors together, bringing scientists and publishers and universities and public institutions together in what is a noble goal uh, to make scientific information openly accessible. I appreciate everything you're doing uh, so that Cyprus remains active and engaged in this effort. Um, there is a lot to be done. It's a noble goal. There is a lot that we can contribute that people will appreciate if we make it happen. So on behalf of the university, I want to thank you for being here. I want to appreciate the time and effort you're putting into this, and I want to wish you success, because it really is important 
for society to have access to reliable information, to have access to knowledge in the making, and to engage with what it is that the taxpayer is investing in. Thank you. Thanks for everything you're doing. I wish you a productive day. Thank you very much. I now invite uh, Ms. Ioana Kleanthus, uh, Director for Research, Innovation and Lifelong Learning uh, at the Director General for European Programs, Coordination and Development for her speech. Thank you. Distinguished guests, dear colleagues, good morning. It's with great pleasure that I address today's event on behalf of the Permanent Secretary of the Directorate General for European Programs, Coordination and Development, who is also the president of the board of directors of the Research Promotion Foundation. Our aim is for all of us today to learn more during this workshop on open science and the role of repositories. One of the basic steps in open science is the open access to scientific information. This is defined as the online access to digital, academic, and scientific content which immediate continues free of charge and free from most copyright restrictions. This facilitates the exchange of scientific information, strengthens research, and ensures the most effective exploitation of research results. It is undisputable that open access to scientific information brings significant benefits to the society. It allows the exploitation and reuse of research output for scientific purposes, enabling researchers to build on previous work and accelerate innovation. It also enhances openness and transparency of the scientific process, which are essential features of responsible research and innovation. At the same time, it provides opportunities for international cooperation. In the long term, open access can contribute towards an increased return on research and innovation, investment, enhance productivity, improve competitiveness, and economic growth. The European Commission supports open access as established practice for dissemination of publicly funded research in the European Union and promotes the open circulation of knowledge as one of the six priorities of the European research area. In this context, as you all know, open access is obligatory for all the peer review publications with results from Horizon 2020 funded projects. During recent years, discussions have progressed and are now moving from open access into the broader picture of open science. The aim is to transform science through ICT tools, networks, and media making research more open, global, collaborative, creative, and closer to society. In order to endorse open science, the European Commission has launched the European Cloud Initiative. This will enable researchers to process the huge amounts of scientific data generated by research and to share their scientific results while improving access to knowledge and thus, as I already said, innovation. The recognition of the benefits of open access for researchers and research funders are the are, and the shared acknowledgement that research and especially publicly funded research is a public good that should be available to the entire society make the development of uh, uh, relative policies imperative. Such policies should be developed both at national and institutional levels in order to render open access as established practice for the dissemination of research. Cyprus adopted in 2016 its national policy for open access to scientific information on the basis of relevant European guidelines and policies and current best practices in other member states. The national policy of Cyprus promotes the green route for open access and encourages researchers to use suitable repositories of open access at an institutional, national, European, and international level. 
Researchers are also encouraged to submit all the, all the data sets which support their publication to an institutional repository which is compatible with OpenAir or to any other data repository of open access. Furthermore, they are encouraged to draft data management plans, integrating them in the process, in the project's life cycle and improving data management throughout the duration of the project and also after its completion. The policy, the national policy, provides the framework, the process, and the general implementation provisions which will facilitate research funders as the Research Promotion Foundation, for example, as well as research stakeholders, for example, the University of Cyprus, in their efforts to adopt policies and measures for open access to scientific information at their level. As things move forward and conditions and needs evolve, the government is ready to initiate discussions on the national policy for open access to scientific information in order to adapt to adapt it to the current requirements and to focus more on, uh, on areas which are deemed of high priority to both the government and the research uh, community as a whole. For this reason, during the second day of this workshop, a discussion on the national policy for open access and the need for its revision will be coordinated by, by your office and uh, you are all welcome to provide your inputs and views. As a conclusion, I would like to emphasize that apart from adopting policies and implementing measures to move from all closed to all open, we must understand that the establishment of open access should be a collective effort of all of us and that a, a wider change of culture is required by institutional bodies and researchers. We all have to understand that open, open, opening up information increases the visibility the, and impact of scientific work while helping to democratize knowledge and develop innovation. The management and exploitation of large volumes of open data and open scientific knowledge raises important challenges and requires new modern practices, methodologies, and infrastructures in which all stakeholders, such as, such as academic libraries, universities, and research organizations should be involved and be up to date, including the creation of institutional policies on open access. We hope that this workshop will contribute in this direction. As policymakers, we are committed to do our share of the mission for rendering open access the established practice for sharing scientific results. Lastly, I would like to thank the University of Cyprus for arranging this interesting workshop and wish to all of us an active and fruitful participation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we will now proceed with the presentations. Um, please note that we will take questions for all uh, the first three presentations uh, at the end before the coffee break. So first we, be we begin with a presentation by Dr. Marina Angelaghi. Uh, Dr. Angelaghi is a research associate at the publishing and SSH unit of the National Documentation Center of Greece. She has expertise on open science and open access, having participated in several European projects, such as RECODE, Pasteur for Open Access, Open Air 2020, Open Air Advance, Opera SD, and Hermeos. She has also expertise in the organization of national awareness raising and training activities on these topics and stakeholder engagement. The floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Um, I would like to start by uh, thanking uh, the University of Cyprus and Sylvia in particular for this very kind invitation to this very interesting um, event. 
Um, we have been working the National Documentation Center and the University of Cyprus for a number of years uh, in the beginning in the context of European projects, but also outside of uh, European projects in the promotion of open access and open science. Uh, we feel that this has been a very fruitful um, collaboration and I think that it's not just us saying this, uh, but uh, um, as we see from the developments, especially um, in Cyprus, we're very happy to, to see that this collaboration has actually resulted in the adoption of a national strategy and uh, very fruitful discussions uh, at um, institutional and, uh, and funder level. So um, turning to, um, to my presentation, uh, I will present um, some of the, the major um, European initiatives uh, that, um, that relate to open access and open science and touch upon uh, issues that uh, were already highlighted by the, the previous uh, speakers and then uh, move on to uh, present and talk about um, Open Air, the European infrastructure for supporting um, open science and um, open access in, in Europe. Um, so, uh, as um, it was previously mentioned, uh, we have been talking a lot about open access uh, primarily to publications and research data, but over the last uh, years there's been a transition uh, of the discourse from open access to, um, to open science, which is a more broad uh, term. And, uh, um, it actually defines the uh, transformations and the opening up uh, of uh, science, which is uh, uh, more um, placing emphasis on the, uh, um, on the uh, collaboration and the, uh, the use of uh, information and communication technologies. It was mentioned before that um, um, a key um, a key issue is the increased collaboration uh, um, among stakeholders and this is also facilitated uh, by um, also um, uh, developments in, in the digital in the digital um, uh, in the digital world. Um, open science is uh, also a broader term that is not uh, focusing solely on open access to publications and, and, and data, but it also encompasses other concepts uh, such as uh, research integrity, citizen science, so um, it's a much uh, broader um, term. And obviously, as it was again pointed out uh, before by the previous uh, speakers, um, open science has great benefits not only for research, but also for um, society in, in, in general, and uh, also for the, uh, for the economy. Um, so here you can see um, a short timeline of uh, major initiatives that have taken place over um, the past uh, years uh, um, in, in, in Europe. Um, these are uh, main, uh, uh, main initiatives uh, adopted by the, um, the European Commission and I mentioned them before because they have a key impact uh, um, at national level, these are initiatives that have uh, triggered um, important developments at, um, at national uh, level. Um, we have the um, European Commission uh, communication on scientific um, information. Um, then uh, um, um, a major initiative was initially um, the pilot action for open access um, within the um, FP7 project and then we moved on to have um, the open access mandate within Horizon 2020 again as it was uh, mentioned before. And uh, now this mandate is even stronger as apart from publications it also covers um, research data through the uh, what is called the uh, open research uh, data pilot even though it's not actually uh, a pilot as it now covers all thematic um, areas of uh, horizon 2020 and uh, um, obviously related developments have to do with the digital market uh, strategy and uh, the fact that um, um, open access is also one of um, the key priorities within the European research area uh, in the context of uh, the open circulation of uh, knowledge. Uh, we have the 2012 um, um, recommendation on access to and preservation of data and more recently we have, uh, we, um, we have the revision of this recommendation. It was published 
in late April this year. Um, and I think that we'll also have the opportunity later on to uh, discuss in more detail what uh, the uh, content of uh, this um, recommendation is and how it affects the work that we are doing at um, um, at national uh, level. So there are a lot of developments that have uh, taken place over um, the last years and uh, all of this um, impact on, on, on the way we work at national level or also at institutional and, um, and um, in relation to the work that um, research funding uh, agencies uh, work. Um, so, as I mentioned, one of the um, one of the key initiatives has to also do with the council conclusions on open science that were published in May 2016. Um, these can be considered as a, a key initiative of the uh, that has um, taken place over the the last uh, years, as it acknowledges the uh, the potential that open science uh, um, um, has to um, to society. And um, it sees um, um, open access to scientific publications as uh, the default option and encourages uh, member states to take uh, all uh, necessary um, actions in order to, um, um, to, to promote this. And uh, also, um, it, um, it highlights as an underlying principle for the optimal reuse of research data that they should be um, as open um, as possible and as close as necessary, taking into account obviously that all not, that not all data uh, can be open for um, obviously um, uh, various uh, reasons. And um, they also um, the uh, conclusions also point out to uh, um, uh, to the fact that in order to have the optimal reuse, um, then. Um, this can only uh, be realized if this is consistent with the fair principles, that is, that data should be uh, findable, accessible, int interoperable, and uh, reusable. Um, the, um, the conclusions also talk about the Open Science Policy Platform, uh, which is the, the platform gathering uh, various stakeholders to promote the uh, European Open Science uh, Policy, also um, a key initiative of uh, um, the last uh, of the last years, and obviously it also encourages member states to take all the necessary um, actions for making um, open science um, a reality. Um, a further um, initiative uh, relates to the um, European Open, open Cloud uh, Initiative, and it aims at addressing a series of, uh, of uh, um, challenges, I would uh, better say, instead of problems that have to do with closed data and, and lack of a uh, overuse uh, framework, and also the lack of interoperability, which is also um, an issue in, in, in a lot of cases. And I think that in the next presentations, um, about repositories, I, 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 I think that we will have the opportunity um, to discuss this more technical aspects that relate to the transition to the um, open science um, environment. Um, so the initiative um, has three distinct, uh, distinct pillars that have to do with the um, European Open Science Cloud, the European Data Infrastructure, and um, uh, the need for widening the, um, the, the, the user base. Um, here I think that it would be important to point out that um, during the, um, um, the discussions on open access and open science, we usually focus on, on, on researchers and um, whether we're talking about policies and how they impact on their, on their work, or whether we're talking about any other aspects, usually the, 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 the main focus is the researcher. Uh, but um, uh, we need also to take into consideration that open access does not only impact on, on, on researchers, and it's there to benefit also um, industry. Uh, let's think about SMEs and, and how they can benefit from um, accessing uh, um, especially um, uh, data and being able to reuse uh, this data for um, the creation of innovative projects and innovative uh, solutions that address uh, um, um, significant societal challenges. So this is something that we have that we should have uh, um, in mind. 
And um, um, also, we should also think about um, the wider um, engagement also of citizens. So let's think about citizen science projects and how they can contribute. Um, uh, again, through the uh, um, um, through different ways uh, uh, by um, collecting, for example, uh, data and how that again um, can uh, benefit uh, both research and also the wider economy and obviously society once again uh, by um, addressing um, current challenges. <clears throat> And uh, obviously, um, uh, we cannot forget about the, um, uh, the latest uh, recommendation on access to and preservation of data of uh, scientific information that, as I uh, said, was uh, published in, in late April. It's actually um, the, um, um, the revision of the 2012 recommendation, taking into consideration all the latest um, developments, especially those that have to do with the um, European Open Science um, Cloud. Um, the recommendation aims to um, support and provide further guidance to, um, to member states. And um, we could argue that it provides um, a holistic approach in the sense that it's not, uh, it does not only talk about um, open access to publications and, and data, but has, uh, um, uh, but also discusses issues that have to do with uh, um, rewards and incentives. Uh, obviously, um, the need for uh, having the appropriate and necessary infrastructure. Um, the need also to um, um, uh, um, develop the appropriate skills and, um, and, and competencies. These are all uh, issues that need to be considered uh, during either the, the adoption or the revision of uh, open science policies. It's not just about um, um, it's not only talking about uh, providing access to, um, to publications and data. Um, um, one should think also about issues, obviously, that have to do with uh, preservation, uh, but also by having the necessary uh, framework that um, incentivizes um, uh, researchers and um, how um, these incentives are taken into consideration during uh, um, um, promotion, for example, um, uh, processes. Um, and also the need to have an appropriate um, training schemes, whether we are targeting researchers or whether we are targeting also um, other uh, members uh, of um, uh, research um, institution that are there to um, um, uh, to support this transition to um, to open science. Um, so uh, the recommendation asks member states uh, to take the appropriate action and uh, asks uh, member states uh, to uh, to pro to. Um, 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 design um, action plans that have concrete goals uh, and, and objectives. And uh, in this, uh, in this uh, process, the national points of reference uh, are highlighted as, uh, as um, 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 key stakeholders uh, in this process. And, um, and obviously, once again, as we highlighted in the, in the very beginning, it's a process that uh, should be based on, on collaboration. It's not just uh, something that uh, um, um, a ministry or um, a university um, uh, does by itself. Um, it's a process that um, uh, needs uh, the wider involvement of, uh, of stakeholders and um, I think that um, uh, Cyprus is uh, is doing great in the in that in that respect, as we've seen that um, the um, the national policy has been actually the the result of this uh, fruitful collaboration between uh, um, the um, the different stakeholders um, that um, um, have um, key roles in the transition to um, open science. Um, so where does Cyprus uh, stand? Um, obviously, this um, 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 the um, this um, uh, transition towards open science that we have been talking about um, um, can be translated in very concrete uh, uh, 
um, steps and actions. Uh, at, the, at the global level, we see that uh, an increasing number of, um, of uh, universities and, and research uh, centers have been uh, have already adopted or are in the process of adopting um, open access policies, and also a significant number of funders are, or have also adopted. Um, open access policies. Um, among them, one can mention the National Institutes of Health in the in the U.S. or the um, research councils in in the and the U.K. Just to to name um, a couple of them. Um, so there's clearly a very a very strong uh, movement and um, and um, many uh, important developments that are are taking place. Um, I think that um, in, in this uh, context, uh, uh, we can say that Cyprus is, um, is well placed in the sense that um, you have already adopted um, a national um, open access strategy a couple of years ago. Um, and it's, um, I think that it's a very positive step, the fact that it was the outcome of this fruitful collaboration that we um, talked about. Um, it touches upon uh, open access to publications and, 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 um, and data, but it also um, talks about um, the necessary infrastructure that is required to support this, uh, this transition. And also um, it touches upon other issues that, uh, we, can, that we can find in the uh, 2018 um, um, recommendation. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the Research Promotion Foundation has included provisions in, uh, um, in um, uh, one of its uh, funding programs, uh, Restart, even though it does not have uh, um, a policy. Uh, but um, we also see that um, in many cases, not just in Cyprus, even though institutions or uh, funding organizations do not uh, um, do not have a policy there, they still um, acknowledge the, the importance of open access to publications and they still um, also uh, see and acknowledge the, the importance of uh, um, respecting uh, fair uh, principles. And we're also happy to see that um, we have ongoing discussions at, um, uh, within universities who are in the process of um, adopting open access and open science policies. And again, we, we see that um, even though the, many of them have, have not actually adopted policies, um, they, they understand the importance of, uh, of open science and open access. And um, they're involved in, in various networks and they, um, they organize various um, activities to raise awareness among uh, the community. So this is also um, a very important um, step. Um, within this uh, process, we must not, I think, forget um, Open Air, which is the research infrastructure supporting this um, um, transition to open science in, in, uh, in Europe. It's there to support um, um, researchers um, in complying with the um, Horizon 2020 open access mandate um, covering publication and research data. And it provides also the necessary infrastructure for, um, for doing this. Um, but um, Open Air, it's not just a, a technical, let's say, uh, project. It has a very strong uh, human uh, network, and we are very proud of this. Um, it has this, uh, this network um, takes um, shape and, and life uh, um, through what we call the National Open Access uh, Desks. Um, there is uh, one NOAD in, in each country. Um, in Cyprus, it's the University of Cyprus, who, who is the, uh, um, the, um, um, the NOAD and, and, and Sylvia. So all questions um, should be um, directed to, to, to Sylvia. And um, one of the um, um, responsibilities of NOAAs uh, have to do with um, also uh, um, engaging with the, uh, with the local stakeholders and the local research community, um, not just at, the, at the, the central level, but also, let's say, at country level. Open Air organizes um, a number of um, training and awareness raising uh, events, but um, here you can see the, uh, um, the network, um, the nodes uh, within Europe. Um, 
So, as I said, um, um, to support uh, not just researchers, but also libraries and uh, all other interested uh, stakeholders, um, Open Air is, is, is doing, um, um, is doing a, a, a job through, um, um, through different um, tools and, and, and resources. Um, here you can see that obviously it has a help desk where you can uh, ask any, any, any question related to open access, whether you're a researcher or a librarian and um, yeah, you have some uh, specific uh, question. Um, it has um, developed um, a lot of um, resources such as um, um, the um, Horizon Guide for, for Researchers. Uh, more targeted ones, such as the one focusing on, uh, on copyright issues, a lot of uh, fact sheets. And we uh, also do a lot of trainings, uh, webinars, uh, either at um, central level or uh, more um, um, at, a, at a country level basis, uh, let's say. Um, you can check the, the webinars organized by um, Open Air at, um, its, um, at its website. Um, you can join them for, for free. Uh, they are organized on a regular basis and um, I think they're, they're one of the open air successes. And in the context of the, the current open air, um, there is also um, a policy task force um, that um, uh, will focus on uh, providing support and uh, assisting all those member states who either have already adopted policies but they would like to um, align them with the European framework. As we know, um, um, in, in a number of cases, uh, um, the, 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 there are different policies even within a country, so researchers are sometimes uh, um, um, they face difficulties in trying to comply with the, the, the different mandates. So um, even for countries who have already adopted policies, we can support them in aligning this policy, especially with the um, EU framework. And for those who are in the process of um, developing policies, we can again help them by providing them with policy templates or with any other um, webinars or any other support that um, they feel could be useful to them. Um, at the National Documentation Center, we have been doing a lot of work in terms of, um, um, in terms of uh, policies. We have been involved in a number of European projects such as um, uh, Medoanet, Recode and Pasteur, who had as a main focus um, uh, to provide support to countries um, in adopting open access policies. Um, I didn't have many, many guides to, to bring for all of you, but uh, these are, the, the blue one is the Madonet guide, and this is, it, the, the red one is the, the Recode uh, uh, guide for research data. Um, you can find them, um, you can find them um, online. Um, currently, within Open Air, we're in the process of uh, updating the policy template, so we hope that uh, um, by summer and obviously from September onwards, you'll be able to find the, the revised policy templates taking into um, consideration the, the latest developments. And we hope that these will be um, useful to, to the work that you're doing. Um, so um, just to, um, to conclude, um, um, and I think that also tomorrow we'll have uh, in a more closed meeting the, the opportunity to discuss in more detail um, specific issues that have to do with the, um, the adoption of open science uh, policies um, at either at the national level or, or also um, at institutional uh, level. Um, I will just like to take the opportunity uh, to mention that uh, at the end of this month, uh, the National Documentation Center, we're organizing um, a conference focusing on open scholarly um, communication. Um, it's organized in the context of the um, Opera Network that um, we are participating. And uh, again, we'll discuss um, um, important issues that have to do with uh, this transition to open science and what this uh, 
um, and what this uh, means to a variety of, um, of stakeholders. Um, the um, Opera Network has a particular focus on the uh, um, social sciences and, and humanities, given that they have uh, um, they um, they were not as active in adopting open science as um, other uh, disciplines. Um, so you're all welcome uh, to join. There is no um, registration uh, fee. Um, registrations are, are still open. And uh, we would very uh, much like um, to, um, to see you um, in Athens. So once again, thank you very much. Our next speaker now is um, Dr. Uh, Lida Skoufari-Themistou. She's a scientific officer at the Strategic Planning Unit of the Research Promotion Foundation, mainly responsible for the design of funding programs and calls, strategic performance management, and research-related policies. She's also a national point of reference for open access to scientific information. Lida, you have the floor. Good morning for me. Uh, thanks uh, a lot for inviting us here to talk about uh, how the uh, Research Promotion Foundation implements uh, open access uh, policies. Uh, so um, I'm going to talk about um, uh, from adopting uh, policies to implementing. Implementing, I think, I think is the is the key word. Uh, so, as you have uh, heard earlier from uh, Dr. Angelaki, the trend now is uh, to move from open access uh, policies to open science in general, much broader sense. Um, uh, it requires a lot of coordination now, a lot of uh, application of new technologies, and uh, in uh, general, it needs uh, a lot of support from the European Commission and from the national um, um, bodies who are um, uh, responsible for open access policies. So what the Commission does uh, to support this change from uh, uh, moving from uh, open access to open science uh, is to uh, promote uh, guidelines, to uh, design and uh, implement guidelines for all member states and as Dr. Angelaki presented uh, earlier, is uh, the, the, a new recommendation has been uh, published two weeks ago, uh, setting the targets uh, towards an open access and open, open science uh, uh, culture, and uh, uh, setting the requirements from funding bodies, academic institutions, uh, governments, etc. Uh, how to do this, uh, this uh, step forward. Um, of course, in the recommendation, it is quite, it's recognized that open access policy uh, is the uh, cornerstone uh, for uh, moving to uh, open science systems. So before talking about the role of the Research Promotion Foundation in implementing, uh, adopting and implementing open access uh, policies, I would like to um, uh, talk about the framework that the, the recommendation uh, has put in order to um, 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 explain the role of academic institutions and uh, funding institutions with regard to uh, open access. Uh, first of all, let's see, uh, let's talk about open access to scientific publications. Um, and what the obligations are for uh, funding institutions like RPF and for academic institutions like the University of Cyprus and other research organizations in Cyprus. Uh, f first of all, uh, we have to set institutional policies and uh, this, th that's why we have the uh, workshop tomorrow. Uh, so it's quite important to move forward. Uh, we have started doing that in Cyprus, but we need a lot of work and a lot of coordination to do so. So one uh, special issue, special um, uh, issue is the institutional policies. Then is the requirements that the funding institutions need to set before providing a grant or uh, uh, project funding. So um, institutions like uh, the Research Promotion Foundation, they need to have requirements from uh, academic institutions that they abide by open access policies. Uh, we need to establish mechanisms in order to monitor the compliance with open access policies 
And we need to, we are asked now to take corrective actions uh, if we see cases of uh, non-compliance. Um, funders must provide funding for open access activities. Uh, that could be infrastructures, open access uh, journals, and uh, any other activities that will promote uh, open access for scientific applications. Uh, then it's providing guidance to researchers. This is both uh, from academic institutions and funding institutions, these requirements. Uh, the next two points, I think they're mainly for academic institutions. Um, is to negotiate with publishers to establish better terms for uh, uh, providing open access to their journals mm -hmm. and uh, also to ensure that the publications uh, which result from the public funding uh, are easily identifiable and um, uh, uh, provide the uh, necessary information uh, for the metadata that needs to uh, describe a uh, publication in order to be identifiable and um, uh, by persist persistence identifier. So it's the technology behind um, uh, a publication. So uh, we've finished with the publications. Now let's see what happens with, uh, what are the recommendations for uh, uh, research data. Um, so we need ways, uh, we need uh, instructions and uh, guidance how to manage uh, the open data and how to uh, have it uh, easily accessible. Uh, again, I think the major uh, uh, guidance, uh, the, the guideline is to set institutional policies. And uh, again, the funding uh, institutions, uh, they should um, uh, ask uh, researchers and research um, uh, performing institutions to provide data management plans before they provide grants and uh, also encourage the researchers to and the institutions to have the data uh, as open as possible as close as necessary is what has been done in the horizon in the past uh, years uh, again provide funding uh, for the management of data, this is for the funding institutions, and again for the academic institutions to make sure that they correctly guide the researchers and uh, their staff uh, how to do that uh, properly, and of course technically how to make the research data identifiable, easily identifiable, and also be linked to other data sets and uh, to the publications. Uh, so I've given you the framework that the Commission expects to, uh, to see uh, in every member state. Now I'm going to talk to you what the Research Promotion Foundation does in order to uh, help towards, towards this uh, direction. Uh, first of all, we have the national, uh, uh, um, we're the national coordinator for the national contact points for Horizon. So we have the legal and financial NCPs uh, at RPF, and they provide uh, information regarding Horizon 2020 projects. Uh, we have also been uh, appointed uh, by the General Directorate uh, uh, for European Programs Coordination and Development as one of the two national points of uh, reference for open access. Uh, and we have adopted uh, the national policy for open access in our restart funding programs. Uh, so what uh, our NCPs do, first of all, uh, I'd like to say that uh, Ms. Lina Tsumbanu and Mr. Christos uh, Haralambus are the two NCPs uh, for legal and financial matters, and uh, this, uh, this subject encloses also uh, open access, uh, and they provide information to applicants and to project uh, participants for Horizon projects regarding their uh, duties and obligations for open access, for data management plans, and for uh, other, uh, other issues regarding uh, research data. They also disseminate uh, supportive uh, measures that the Commission takes uh, or funds uh, for open access. And they also promote good practices regarding open access. Uh, as a national point of reference uh, for open access, what we do is we try to coordinate the measures and the directions given in the recommendation uh, especially now that it has been updated. 
we are asked to attend uh, meetings in Brussels with the Commission in order to discuss uh, specific issues. Um, we are informed about the uh, latest developments. Uh, we discuss with other member states what they are doing um, in, uh, for open access in, the, in their own, uh, at the national level, and we exchange good practices. And then we come back and uh, we try to implement and coordinate the measures uh, in our country. And uh, at the end of uh, each year, we try to uh, report on the progress we are making as a country. Uh, now, the final uh, uh, role, and I think it's the most important one uh, for our PF, is to adopt and implement the national policy for open access. We have done so. It was a good timing that while we were developing the national policy, we were also developing our new funding uh, framework of programs, the restart uh, programs. So we, we were lucky to have the policy, the national policy ready, and we adopted it uh, in our work program uh, document. It's in chapter 7.4. This is more practical information on where to find it and what, it, uh, um, what the provisions are. Uh, it's in the regulations part of the uh, work program document. And uh, first of all, I'd like to stress out that uh, open access to publications uh, is mandatory. Uh, it's mandatory. We expect that, and it's also immediate. We expect that uh, all publications that are produced uh, through the funded pro projects will be immediately accessible, um, either in uh, using the green route or the gold route and the open access journal, but journals. And um, uh, I'm repeating myself, it's compulsory, uh, because yesterday I had some, some discussions, some uh, the researchers uh, called me and uh, they were uh, under the impression that it was, we have adopted the policy that, but it was not um, uh, compulsory. Uh, so, uh, and we, we hold the researchers the responsible for uh, uh, depositing their publication in a suitable uh, repository. It doesn't apply to uh, data. I have to be clear about this. It applies to publications only at this stage. Um, well, of, course, uh, of course, we take into account the embargo period that maybe the publisher will uh, uh, require from researchers. Uh, we, we say uh, that the embargo period, we, we, we will um, uh, respect any embargo period that uh, is imposed by the publisher. But in general, you should have in mind that this is usually between six and 12 months. Anything uh, outside this range uh, it should ring some bells to you because it's a bit strange uh, to be longer than uh, 12 months. Uh, even so, even if there's an embargo period, we expect the metadata of the publication and the uh, short summary to be uh, immediately accessible to everybody and uh, that the post print of the publications is, is there, but it's closed, and it opens immediately after the embargo period expires. Now about the suitable repositories, uh, as previously been said, uh, they have to be compatible with open air uh, infrastructures um, and provide the technology that is required to be, uh, so that the publications are easily identifiable. Um, we offer a free choice uh, between uh, institutional repositories, international repositories, Zenodo. Uh, I know uh, we, we expect that there will, there will be some difficulties uh, in finding a suitable uh, repository. We know that not all um, uh, academic institutions or research institutions uh, have easy access to repositories. Uh, but uh, I think there is plenty of time by the time there are publications through our uh, funded projects, there's plenty of time to, to explore all the possibilities and uh, find a way to, to deposit your uh, publications. Um, uh, now when it comes to funding, uh, we will fund uh, any, any activity related to open access for our uh, projects. Unfortunately, we don't have any other uh, supportive actions at the moment outside uh, the funded projects, but uh, we give the freedom to every uh, project coordinator to 
uh, to include any uh, such um, uh, related uh, cost under the other specific cost category in their budgets. Um, now, as I said before, it's uh, nice to adopt policies. It's difficult to implement. I think the funding is one step towards implementing the policy. The other is the monitoring. How we, how we uh, try to monitor uh, the compliance with the policy. First of all, we have already included in our uh, evaluation uh, proposals uh, some uh, questions to the evaluators to, to check if the uh, project has uh, taken into account the open access policy. Uh, we also intend to uh, have a spe specific section in the progress reports uh, of the projects where researchers will uh, report the publications, the titles, the metadata, and the repository that the publication has been uh, deposited. Uh, we are into entering an agreement with the open air uh, project in order to use their infrastructure uh, to get uh, to collect statistical data when it comes to uh, identifying the publications that results from our project, project projects and uh, are in open access. So what, how we do that? We're going to provide data, uh, non-personal uh, data, uh, about the projects we fund to the open air um, uh, project, and uh, they are going to collect all information with regards to the open access uh, publications. Uh, now, about sanctions, uh, we have not uh, um, we have not uh, foreseen any sanctions uh, for the moment. Uh, we are going to try to implement the policy with uh, the previous measures that I stated. And um, if we see in a couple of years that uh, maybe in, uh, yes, I would say in a couple of years, that uh, n the majority does not conform to, uh, to the uh, policy, uh, then we have to think about uh, co taking corrective measures. I, I wouldn't exclude uh, um, applying penalties on uh, the final budget of the projects. Um, since the recommendation now is much stricter uh, from the Commission. Um, but uh, I'm optimistic that, that we, won't, uh, we won't have to do it. Um, we provide information uh, as NCPs, uh, as uh, RPF help, de help Desk, as National Points of Reference, uh, and there's uh, Open Air National uh, Open Access uh, Desk at the University of Cyprus. And of course, I expect every academic institution to appoint one person in their organization to provide uh, information to their uh, researchers. So this is all from me. Thanks for your attention. Uh, we now move to the last presentation before our coffee break. Uh, our next speaker is uh, Dr. Maria Mikhailopoulou from the GEOS uh, Research and Innovation Center of Excellence. Dr. Mikhailopoulou holds a BSc in Informatics and Tele Telecommunications from the University of Athens and an MSc in Communications Engineering from the RWTH Aachen University in Germany. In 2015, she received her doctoral degree on wireless networks from the Faculty of Electrical Engineering and Information Technology of the RWTH Aachen University. Uh, she then worked for six years as a full-time research and teaching assistant at the Institute for Networked Systems of the same university. And uh, since uh, January 2016, she started collaborating with the Department of uh, Electrical and Computer Engineering of the University of Cyprus as a teaching associate. And since September 2017, she joined the KIOS Research and Innovation Center of Excellence as a research assistant. As a member of the KIOS Open Access Committee, she's actively engaged in the development and implementation of the center's open access policy. Maria, you have the floor. Thank you. Okay, so good morning. Uh, I would like, uh, on behalf of KIOS, to thank you very much for this invitation. Um, since KIOS is actually in the process of implementing uh, our own policy, um, it is a pleasure to <laughs> uh, present our efforts. So I will try today to give you basically 
an overview of our, of our practical experience, so to say, in this process. Mm -hmm. So a sh very short introduction about KIOS. I guess many of you are aware of, uh, of KIOS. So KIOS is a research center within the University of Cyprus. And it, it, in the uh, last few years, it has been, um, it has been a, a pretty successful uh, research center with uh, more than 70 externally, fu externally funded projects and collaborations with industry and governmental organizations. Uh, we are currently approximately 100 researchers, and the plan is to expand to 200 researchers uh, until 2023. So the center is, um, is, is an, an expanding phase right now. So um, the, um, the KIOS Research Center has been awarded uh, a, a large funding. Uh, it, this is the so-called teaming project, if you uh, have heard about it. So this is a strategic partnership between the KIOS research, the, 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 the KIOS and the Imperial College of London uh, to um, make the KIOS a, a so-called center of excellence in Europe. So the, as, a, as a center of excellence, the vision of KIOS is now to become a world-class center of excellence for multidisciplinary research and innovation in the area of intelligent systems and networks with emphasis on monitoring, control, management, and security of critical infrastructures for the benefit of the society and economy of Cyprus and Europe. In order to achieve this goal, the center has uh, decided to focus on these five pillars. So, um, one of the five pillars is the so-called open knowledge. This is basically equivalent to the uh, term open science, which is, as it has already been mentioned, a broader term that covers uh, op open access. So, the KIOS open knowledge is basically uh, a plan to openly disseminate every publication and every research result that is coming out of the center. And this, the plan is that this will not, will, will not cover only publications, but it will cover also open research data and open soft, and software. For, the, for engineering research organizations, the part of the open software is uh, quite critical, uh, I would say, in, in research. And finally, I, I'm all, I would also like to uh, stress that we will also try not only to publish our code, but we will uh, try to provide the online the part of reproducibility. This means that everybody will be able to, um, to find online the code and execute the code without having the software installed in the, in the computer. So how, um, how we are implementing our open knowledge uh, vision? So the, our, the, our plan in, um, is, consists, so to say, of the following steps. So as a first step, the, um, the, a, an open access committee has been established. Uh, it consists of three postdoctoral researchers, two colleagues of, of me and, my, and myself. And the open access committee is then responsible basically for the, for the creation and the implementation of the policy. So um, we are engaged with the creation of an, access, of an open access policy that covers the following. So the publications, as I mentioned before, the data sets, the software, and the reproducibility of the, of the research. We are currently, um, as far as the creation of the policy is concerned, we are, we are already um, completed the part of that covers the scientific publications. Of course, it, it, it is a document, it is a, a live document that we, we uh, make all, all the time modifications to it, but it's, it's so to say, finished and it, it's, it's ready to be implemented. And we are currently working on the uh, other parts. So, after the creation of the policy, we have to make sure that the policy is implemented. So this means, uh, 
first of all, that we need to provide support to the researchers in the center uh, in order to be able to um, comply with their um, um, with their with with the requirements of the policy. So we provide our plan is um, to provide clear step by step manuals, user manuals that are easy to follow and very clear. Uh, the second part is that we provide uh, periodic uh, presentations for the researchers. Uh, we are currently in the stage that we, we are giving presentations every six months, and we will probably make, make it annually as the things uh, progress and researchers become aware of the stuff. And finally, we, of course, uh, provide on-demand personal support when people uh, have questions, then they can they just drop by. Okay, then we should also make sure that the policy is implemented correctly. Um, so we should provide the quality control. We basically check each upload that the researchers make to see that it follows the policy. Finally, we should also monitor the um, the, the, the implementation progress, meaning, meaning to see whether the policy is implemented or not, to, to which extent the policy is implemented. In order to do that, um, we, we are trying to develop basically automatic tools, because you, you can imagine that is, it is very difficult to, <coughs> to check one by one the publications to see if they are uploaded or not. So we are basically developing uh, tools to automatically cross-check cross -check the publications from Google Scholar to our open access repository. And uh, also we are collecting information from our online repository to see which researchers are active, which researchers that did, did made uploads and so forth. And finally, uh, we should find a way, this, this part is actually something that we we are currently thinking of, uh, we should find a way to enforce compliance. So we, we should find a ways to motivate or force researchers to um, uh, make their job. So I will, um, I will try now to, I, I will present very briefly the parts of the, of the open access policy. So the first part has to do with the open access publications. So Kios has selected Zenodo.org uh, as, um, as the platform of choice. I think you all received a flyer for Zenodo in your conference back. So Zenodo is an op so this is a screenshot basically of the Kios of the Kios knowledge portal in Zenodo. Um, as you can see, no, it's it's very small, but we, we currently have. Uh, 68, um, 68 publications uploaded. Hopefully we will um, have much more in the following months. So, uh, Zenodo has been selected as our repository for, ma for many reasons. Uh, first of all, it is a European-based repository. It is owned by CERN, so it's not, it's not a company-owned repository. These, these uh, facts are important for a university. Um, so it qualifies as an open access repository for the European Union. You may know that other repositories, other well-known repositories like ArcSiv and ResearchGate are not considered by European Union as open access. I, I, I will not get in details why. A uh, second very important fact is that it is automatically linked to H2020 uh, projects. So, so whatever you, we upload there, it goes automatically in, the, in our project reporting procedures. Um, and then it has also some nice, nice features. So it, it's, it's a well-developed repository. So it can host many types of different documents. You can also link to the publisher's website where the original paper is published. And some uh, publishers actually um, require you to do that. So it's a useful uh, feature. And you can also link to other types of documents. So if, 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 we store our, if we store our data or software in other repositories, you can easily link from your upload in Zenodo to these uh, types of data. 
And finally, it provides all metrics for each paper, which is also a useful, um, a, a useful uh, indicator for measuring our, the impact of our research. Then we go, we go, base, we go to the uh, part of the open research data. So the open research data means that we will not only make publications freely available, but we want to make also the data that has been used for, re for this research freely available. This is far more complicated uh, in terms of the rights and permissions that um, we have to comply with for this data. So, uh, the, um, so the, the SCIOS Research Center has also established a data, apart from the Open Access Committee, we also have a KIOS Data Management Committee who, uh, uh, who will be responsible for the creation of the data management plan for the center. And then uh, it will be a close collaboration between the Data Management Committee and the Open Access Committee to find the guidelines how the data will go open access. Currently, we are in the state where the, basically the data management committee uh, are trying to uh, structure a repository. Uh, I think it, um, we, we are not quite sure yet it will, it, if it will be um, an old, an, uh, our own repository or a published repos public repository for this. So they are structuring the repository that will um, host the data. So we are on the, at this phase. And finally, we also want to go uh, open with our software, basically the code that is used for uh, obtaining the scientific results. Uh, I understand that for, for science in general, this is not, uh, this is not always uh, relevant, for, but for engineering sciences, it's really, really important. I mean, the, the software, the code that we are using to, to produce results. So we will try to combine the open software part with the uh, reproducibility part and use, so we will go one step further than just providing the open access to code, and we will use an online computational platform instead of a software repository. So this means that the code and data will be uploaded to this um, uh, software, to this uh, platform, so that anyone can reproduce the results without having need, need to have the um, software installed in the computer. So our platform of choice uh, looks like it will be CodeOcean. I don't know if you are aware of it. Uh, so the nice features about the CodeOcean is that, the first one is that it, 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 it is a partner of, of IEEE. So there is a direct link from the IEEE Explore webpage to the, to the Code Ocean uh, page where you, the code is, can be, um, is to be found. And this is really important for us because most, the majority of our publications basically are, uh, have IEEE as a publisher. And secondly, um, we will link, of course, from our records in Zenodo to the code ocean, and this will be the part actually of open access. So from the open access repository of publications, we will link to the code ocean, uh, and it, basically anyone, it's free, anyone can download the code, and if you have a free account, then you can run the code, so you can reproduce the results. Uh, actually, the, the optimal would be to find a service that allows to execute the code without ha need to have an account, but we were unable to find something like that. So, it, it's a, so this, the part for, for, the, for the possibilities is, is uh, pretty, um, um, it's, it's very specialized, so it's not easy. It, you, don't, you do not have too many choices, too many options. So um, I would like then to ma make some comments about why is, op is open access important. I think that ev everybody here is probably know ev everybody here probably knows uh, these facts. So of course, for uh, researchers, it gives you the access to literature from wherever without subscriptions, 
Uh, if you are working, if, for us that we are working in the university, this is not very important. It, it, it does not sound as very important, but there are researchers uh, uh, th that they, they make research basically outside of uh, this kind of organizations like universities. For example, there, there, there are researchers that are working in companies and, or just scientists that they, want, they need to have the access. And of course, for us as authors, um, it provides that our um, work becomes freely available to everybody. And what is interesting is that, of course, uh, it gives, um, it, it has been found actually in, re in some research, research that it, uh, it increases your citation numbers and it increases also the, nu the number of times your paper is accessed and also the, the uh, the visibility of the papers in uh, search engines. So this, this is the important part for the researchers. What I would like to stress, especially for us engineers, is that uh, apart from the, from the publications, from the open access publications, uh, it, it, it is, for the publication it is very clear why the open access is important, but it is, it, it is of, um, of tremendous importance to also provide the open access to the data, to the complementary material, as we say it. This is the data and the code. So the code and the data sets is something that currently is generally not available. Uh, and it's, this is not a matter of subscription. Even if you have a subscription to a journal, usually you, the, the code and the software, the, the code and the data sets are not there, are not available. So this is something uh, completely new, the availability of the code. The second one is that, for, for the, the second um, part is that the data sets, um, if you are researchers, uh, you probably know that they are really, really valuable for us. So they are, they are necessary for the research. I mean, without data sets, you cannot do research, basically. And they are, they are very, very hard to find. And it's not, it's not an easy, it's, it's not just trivial to create a data set. I mean, uh, especially as it, uh, as it comes to real world data sets and not just artificial, artificially created data. And uh, the last part is about the open software. So the open software as we see it is the actual enabling key that gives the others the opportunity to build upon our research. And this is basically what we want for our research. I mean, if, when people build upon your research, then the impact, the impact factor of the research goes tremendously high, right? So this is basically the, uh, our ultimate goal for our research, to be reusable. And, and, the, and to having the code available is a, a, a key for that process to happen. So that's why we, we believe very strongly in this idea of opening the code and the software in order to um, increase the impact of our work in the, uh, research com for the research community. So um, I would also like to make uh, a short comment on our on our experience, basically, in this process. So what we learned from the practical uh, um, employment of this. So the difficult part, after all, is how to get all researchers on board. So implementing the policy, is, it, it's not simple. You have to read a lot. You have to read guidelines. You have, it's a lot of work, but you can do it. I mean, you, you sit there in your, in your office one day, two days, one month, three months, and you finally do it. And then it comes the implementation part, and you go to, 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 to the other offices, and you're excited, and you announce to people what they want. And then you, you expect them to start uploading papers. And they do it for three days, for one week, and then you remind them, and they do it for a second week, and then and then, <laughs> so yes, so this, uh, the, the part of getting researchers on board, we, we identified that it's, it's a twofold thing. So the first part is to achieve the compliance. Achieving compliance, it means that 
that people upload their work. So our, the ultimate goal should be that this procedure of open access will be a part of our routine. So you, it, it will be a routine thing. So you know that as, as soon as a, a, a paper will be published, then you directly go to the repository and you upload it. And secondly, when you write, when you, when you, uh, write your code and when you uh, structure your data, and this is much more difficult, you must have in mind that this will go also open access. Because to be honest, when we write our code, sometimes it's just for us. I mean, when you write software or data, you put keywords that are, are not, that is just re only relevant for you. So this is something that has to, gradu to, to gradually change in our, in our uh, culture and habits in order to tr um, make the, this transition to open access. So, and this, this is a difficult part. Um, the second part is that, okay, um, it's not only necessary that people upload their work, but they should also do it correctly. So, uh, the, according to the policy, and this will be, uh, this is according to the KIOS policy, but this will be valid for every policy that one will uh, create. M many things must be done in a very specific way. So, you need to add a copyright note for, spe for specific publishers, or you need to um, enter your, your funding acknowledgements in a specific way, so, and, so, and, and so forth. So, um, in order to maintain the quality of, of this uh, effort and of our open access portal, um, we have to check, basically, each and every up upload uh, requ um, request to see if it, if, if it um, complies with the policy. So this is actually a lot of work, and the, the so well, um, no matter whether an entry is correct or not, we will be checking it. But you can imagine that the time spent for an incorrect upload is much higher than the time we spent for a correct upload. And this, this is uh, multiplied by a factor if you consider that for the incorrect upload, we should also initiate a, a, a communication via email requesting the changes and helping people. So it's really important to come into a stage where people learn how to do it. And when they do it, they do it correctly. So we don't need corrective ac correcting action. So um, finally, um, what we... Uh, as a conclusion, basically, of this presentation, uh, what KIOS identifies as, from, the, from our so far experience in the last few months, what we identify as the key ingredients for a successful open access policy, for open access culture, is um, the following. So, first of all, we believe that open access for research centers nowadays is a key pillar to success. And that's why actually open knowledge is one of the five strategic pillars that KIOS has uh, identified in order to um, achieve the vision. So um, the first, first key, first point is that um, this thing needs some resources. So a research performing organization needs a group of, pe of people to dedicate time uh, in order to implement the policy and then guide the process. So it, it's something that needs resources. It's not, it will not be done automatically. The second thing is that um, if um, open access for data and software is also desirable, then the, the, the thing becomes much more complicated. The open access for data and software is much more complicated for several reasons. So, uh, the, in that case, the additional creation of a data management uh, committee is a good practice because you also need a data management plan, which is also um, a, a big effort. And then the last part is that um, after, um, after defining all the procedures and guidelines, uh, the researchers need to be trained 
and they need to have easy, act, easy access to, guide, to very clear guidelines. Otherwise, if you require from people to, to spend too much time on learning the process, then nothing will happen. You have to make the process for them as simple as possible. And finally, uh, we, we, we should also be able to invent ways in order to enforce the compliance and the current implementation of the policy. Um, because uh, um, a policy that is just um, um, stored in a drawer is uh, it's, it's no, it's no useful policy. So it should be also implemented. And it, this is not done automatically, unfortunately, as we have learned. Okay, so thank you very much. This is... Thank you very much, Maria, for this uh, presentation. Um, I think what you have presented us uh, here is uh, very impressive, and actually I think you're doing an excellent job in this field. And um, your presentation actually showed us that um, it's not an easy job to uh, uh, design or implement these policies, but it can actually be done. <laughs> and this is very encouraging for all of us who are dealing with these uh, issues in, in Cyprus. Um, I will just pick up one point from your presentation because you very nicely outlined the benefits of the Zenodo uh, repository. And um, in case our audience here does not know, uh, Silvia was very kind enough to um, uh, create this community for Cyprus in Zenoto. So for those researchers uh, who do not uh, have an institutional repository, they can refer to this community to upload their uh, publications. I think um, many of you have already uh, done so. We're at about um, 90 publications uh, so far in this uh, community. So uh, now we will take questions for all the two presentations. I think I would like to invite the speakers to uh, join me here at the panel. It will be easier to uh, take the questions and provide answers. I, w uh, I have a question for the last speaker. Uh, you were talking, first of all, congratulations about a very thorough presentation. You were talking about uh, and the possibility of enforcing this, and then I want to go back to the motto as open as possible, as close as necessary, and wanted to ask you, you didn't refer at all to, to the close as necessary, and I wanted you to, especially if you plan on making it, uh, on enforcing it, I would like to see. What do you think about it? Sorry, uh, if, if you could, when you ask a question, state your name and the organization you come from. What yes, I'm from the Agricultural Research Institute, and my name is Dionysia Fasula. Yes, uh, when, uh, of course, microphone. Uh, thank you. So, um, I didn't mention that because basically uh, it's, uh, when, we say, when we, I say, when I said enforce, I mean enforce, um, um, of course, in the limitations that we have for the specific, uh, for each specific thing, so to say. So, uh, for, the public, for the publications that are published in journals, these limitations are given by each pub by the publisher, usually. So, for this, for, I mean the limitation whether you can, of the as close as necessary. So the publisher gives basically all the information for the publication that is published. And then, as when it comes to the, so and th this is fairly simple actually. So it, it is basically uh, easily accessible in, in each publisher's website. Then, when we come to the data and to the software, uh, it's much more complicated, and this is exactly the reason I said that we need a data management plan. But we need a data management plan for each project because the, the, for each project the, the, the data management plan for each process project will provide the this, exactly this information the, as close as necessary. The open access policy it will 
then afterwards be written, the open access policy will include guidelines on how to go open access, given that you are following the limitations of the data management plan of the specific project. Yes, it, it, can, it, cannot be, it, it cannot go otherwise for the, for the data and for the square because, for example, we, you have data, we have data that are not produced by us. For example, they are produced by a mobile network operator. No, even if they are produced by you, you may want to... Yes, for, yes exactly, some data, yes. So this will be defined, decided within the project. That's enough. Yes, yes. Thank you. Next question. Yes, please. Hello. Uh, my name is Lida Ioannou from NIREAS International Water Research Center, and I have a question for Ms. Uh, Michalopoulou. <laughs> Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, regarding Zenod, this is an, an institutional repository. I mean, uh, most publishers uh, uh, suggest to, to put your accepted manuscript in uh, some repositories. And uh, there are some guidelines in which repository you can uh, upload your accepted manuscript and not your published manuscript. Yeah, okay. Uh, I, I'm not sure if I saw in the publisher website Zenodo. I, I saw many delay. For example, ResearchGate, I know that uh, it's not an option, mm -hmm. but Zenodo uh, is included in, in the institutional repositories. The I'm not sure, that's why I'm asking. Uh, the publishers usually do not uh, give restrictions on the repository you will, uh, um, you will uh, publish then the open access pay, um, document. I mean, I may, they might give suggestions, but I mean, it's, they don't, it's not restricted. I mean, if they don't mention Zenodo, usually there is no, no restriction. I think so. Um, you can find, uh, for example, in Elsevier, hmm. okay, uh, there are some links and uh, there are some uh, guide uh, websites where you can put your DOI ID of your publication and you see where you are available to, to upload your uh, accepted manuscript per each publication, not for all the same. And in this uh, website you can see a, especially in which repositories you can upload your manuscript, your accepted manuscript. And Mendeley, for example, is an option. Open air is an option, and institutional repositories. That's why it's, it's a general option. That's why I'm asking if Zenodo, because I, what, what I understand from your uh, presentation, as Kios, you use uh, Zenodo. Yes. Why you choose Zenodo? Yes, I know that it's a Maria, access repository, but uh, I think so that it's publisher um, for. Ah, that's why. So is included in the open air? Uh, if I may add something. Okay, yes. Uh, of course, I will mention it later to my presentation, but oh, okay. um, I think publishers do not have the right to tell you where you can deposit your work. Uh, also, Zenodo is an option which anyone can choose. But European Commission says that you can put your work, the, the main point is to have your work in open access. So you can choose an institutional repository, you can choose a subject repository, or if you have nothing that it's, it, if you can't find anything suitable for you, European Commission provides Zenodo, which is a kind of orphan repository for, 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 for works that. Um, they cannot be hosted anywhere else, you can host it here. So Gios just chose to put the, 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 their works to Zenodo. They, they could uh, decide to put it anywhere else. Yeah? 
Very clear. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we must put also the accepted manuscript in the note of or the published. Depends on the um, on the agreement you had with your publisher. That's why the commission says um, you should keep your copyrights. Usually, the publishers ask for a copyright transfer agreements. So you have to negotiate about that. That I need to, yes, <laughs> uh, that I, I have the obligation to give my, my publication to a repository. Uh, so you have to negotiate with your publisher to, 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 um, Keep to, the to, to have your right, your copyrights actually. Before the uh, acceptance of my manuscript. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I think Marina wants to add something also. Uh, maybe just to add as a useful, uh, uh, a useful resource is the, the Sherpa Romeo, yes. where you can check the, the publisher's uh, policy in terms of what you can do um, with your manuscript and uh, um, which version they, they let you um, deposit in a, in a repository. So in that sense, depending on um, if, if, you, if you have, um, if there's like a mandate from your institution or from a funder that requires something uh, specific, then you can um, check um, uh, how your, your, your policy um, um, fits uh, uh, with um, the, the journal you have uh, chosen in terms of what they let you do and, and, and then see whether you comply or, or, or not. Can you repeat the name? Ah, Sherpa Romeo. Also about the, about your, um, the agreements that you can uh, negotiate with your uh, publisher, you can find an author attentum, yeah. I think it's uh, by Spark. It's another organization that gives a kind of a template uh, how um, a contract must be with your publisher. Yeah. But I think that the, the important thing is that when there is an open access policy in your institution or from, from your funder, I think the, the important thing is it is, is to for each researcher to start to think in um, a bit in advance in terms of uh, okay uh, I have this this project which will lead to um, a certain number of, of publications so start thinking about which journals you would like um, to target and see their um, what their um, what their policies are in terms of uh, of uh, self self archiving, for example, and then you can uh, adjust obviously um, your strategy. So what we um, uh, what we say to to researchers is not to not leave this for the very last moment, but be aware when there is an open access policy from from the very beginning and and start planning. And thinking maybe also of uh, any related cost that um, uh, may may exist. So if you start thinking about all these different things from from the very beginning, then I suppose that you can plan a bit uh, better in terms of um, um, like um, ensuring that you have enough funds for, for example, uh, paying APCs or choosing the right journal um, and so on. Thank you very much. Next question. Before I think I saw someone from this area. No? I have, I have questions. <laughs> okay. If you don't mind. Go ahead. <laughs> we still have some minutes. So I have, I have questions for each one of you, if you don't mind. <laughs> so um, I will start with Marina. Um, you mentioned that you are now in a process of uh, up updating the templates, the policy templates. Um, you know that we already use the template, uh, policy template for our national policy. Can you mention some of the differences that these templates will include? So that we, will, we must have in mind to make our uh, revision plans, <laughs> maybe. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I think that one of the things is that um, um, in comparison to the, the, the previous version of the, the policy template where there was uh, um, like a soft approach in terms of uh, open access to research data, um, now um, uh, in alignment with the, um, the, um, the horizon mandate, uh, it's not like a soft approach, but it's a mandate, for example. Um, then we also try to put uh, more focus on um, issues such as uh, um, training and, um, and, and skills and this, uh, let's say, support framework that needs to, to exist uh, um, in an institution. Um, and um, obviously we cannot uh, include all aspects uh, of, uh, of, uh, of open science, like all, all the concepts, but uh, uh, for example, we, um, um, uh, one thing that is mentioned is that we en en encourage, for example, the wider involvement uh, of, of stakeholders like in citizen science projects, for example, but this again is a soft uh, um, approach. Um, yeah. okay. Thank you. We will have them in mind when we are expecting them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, my, next, my next question is for Lida about the, the funding program that you already announced. Um, are you planning of including the, the, the mandate on research data to the, to the program schema, the funding schema? Um, we, we plan to adopt all provisions of uh, national uh, policies. So if our national policy is being revised and uh, uh, we're trying to not just to encourage but to enforce research data uh, management and uh, open access to it, uh, yes. Uh, maybe not now, but uh, in two years when we have our new uh, programs, program framework, then we will uh, include that as well. And my last question, even though I have too many questions for you, but uh, we, try <laughs> <laughs> we try not to expand. Um, indeed, you are doing a great job in GEOS. Congratulations. Um, I would like to know what are the reactions of your researchers when you say that uh, you, you have to uh, make your work um, open, openly accessible and uh, regarding the fact that the evaluation process still, in, at least in our university, is attached to the publications, the rankings, the impact factors, the citations, etc. How they react on this? And do they feel that they will lose? Uh, of their evaluation process, if they give their work in open access. Uh, no, 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 no. I didn't. I didn't have this impression because. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they, they they do not. If if something is published, is is peer reviewed published, mm -hmm. then even if you make it available, open access, then it, it does not lose of this. I mean, the value is to make a peer review acceptance. Mm -hmm. So, I, I don't think that, I, I don't see how these two... So they publish the to content. their uh, journal of their uh, preference? Yes, yes. Uh, and then... And, and then? And then, mm -hmm. after, when, the, when the paper is accepted, and actually most of the, most of the researchers um, want to do it this way. So first there the comes the peer review publication and then the open access. They negotiate with the publishers as already mentioned or no? Um, no, we didn't do that. They, they just uh, select the publisher that they, they accept, uh, the publisher accepts open access to the peer review. Yes, to be honest, ev everything Okay, we, we are um, in the state, but now since we are in the, the initial phase, we, are, we, 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 didn't, we, didn't, we do not, we have not yet sent articles with having open access in mind. We just mm. get t taking our articles that are published and we try to put them on open the access. Pre, pre, yes, and to be honest, -pub. the publishers that we have, we have we typically uh, published with, they, they are okay with open access. Mm -hmm. um, most of them, they, they uh, let you publish 
the accepted version, not the, not the um, published or edited version, but the accepted version is completely the same. I mean, is, is the is the accepted vectors after the review mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. It's completely the same, and at least for us, uh, we, we, we engineers typically uh, use the LaTeX templates of the publishers to write the paper, so mm -hmm. it's almost identical. Yes. I mean, even the document that we... Without the identification yes, of the publishers. Almost, it's almost same. identical to the mm -hmm. other ones. So mm -hmm. yes, yes. You don't feel that this, mm -hmm. will, this is a problem for us. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, the final question. <laughs> First of all, I uh, congratulate for the presentation, very interesting. Uh, I want to ask Maria about the uh, Imperial College mm -hmm. policy regarding the open access and how the collaboration between the two organizations and the GEOS has a common, let's say, identity. How you um, the thing will, will go as follows. Uh, the Imperial is a huge college. I mean, we cannot, they, they already have their open access policy, yes, and we cannot uh, make any, uh, and any modifications to that. Uh, but we should, for the, they, they also, they, there are researchers in the Imperial College that they are working within the framework of the teaming project. Mm -hmm. These publications that are within this, uh, under the umbrella of the teaming project, will, uh, should follow this, uh, this policy that we are uh, creating here, because basically this, the policy is, I mean, a mod the, the main motivator for doing the policy, to be honest, was the, the teaming project. So it's, mm -hmm. yes. Do you think that we can extend the policy of GEOS within the Cyprus academic community? It's, it's, it's a good pilot or a good example just to steal some points. <laughs> and, uh, um, it's, it's difficult for me to, <laughs> to answer with but positive, but we hope so. I mean, Yes. Uh, I would I would say yes. Um, the only ma ma the main only two points that I I would think of that there might be differences is that uh, we are mainly focused on engineering mm -hmm. sciences and this is our background and this is this is what we know so I don't know if there are differences I really do not know so yes yeah, so this is this is what and, and our publishers I mean we 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 are reading the web pages of these mm -hmm. publishers. I don't know if there are differences. And the second part is that I also um, mentioned in the presentation that the presentation that we are still um, searching ways. I mean, the, the part of the policy on how to uh, engage researchers and getting them on board is still uh, undeveloped. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Okay, if there are no uh, further questions, I think... Uh, we are finished, we are finished. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, now I think we can break for coffee. Please be back in uh, half an hour.